everyone, it's Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor. It's been a long time since I did a Facebook Live video, y'all. But I've had everybody asking me and reminding me that I need to do a video. So, I'm back. How's everybody doing? It is like a quarter to ten, so I don't even know if anybody's going to get on here because it's kind of late. So, I'll just uh, hang out for a couple seconds. Oh, got somebody on board. Hey, Sarah, how are you? Somebody else? Got two, three? <laughs> Waiting to see a few people come online because it's kind of late to be watching me paint. But if you're game, I'm game because I'm going to be painting whether anybody's watching or not. And I've had a lot of people asking me to paint on live uh, videos and to do some more videos of me painting. So I thought I'd get on here tonight, kind of last minute. We just got home from church. Uh, this, this week we've got our gospel meeting going on. So um, we've been at church, or we will be at church every night this week at 7 o'clock. And won't get home till like quarter till nine. So this was kind of last minute. I was going to be painting anyway. So I thought I'd get on and let you guys watch. I'm painting. Oh, hang on just a second. My phone just said that battery was low, but I thought, hang on just a second. Are you still there? <laughs> For some reason it's not charging. Let me check. My phone's like about to die. So I plugged it up to see if I could get it to charge. Hang on. back here. That kind of makes a difference. Okay, I think we're good now. Let me check. I won't die in the middle of my video. Florida was good, Sarah. I just got back from Florida um, Saturday night at like one o'clock in the morning. So I haven't done any painting in like two weeks nearly and I was really starting to miss it actually. You would think I would get enough of it, but the whole time in Florida I'm like, oh, I wish I could stop and paint this right now or whatever. But tonight I'm painting this shape. I call it a fancy frame. Uh, it's just kind of the name I came up with for it. It's actually for a good friend of mine, um, Mariah Hamby. I don't know if she's going to get on tonight or not, but this is for her baby girl. She's uh, having probably here in about a month or so, and I'm painting her like a little hospital door hanger. Hello, Tanya. Welcome. As you come on, say hi to me so I can have somebody to talk to while I paint. And if you will, if you, if you know somebody who might enjoy this, share the video for me. It helps, uh, helps get me some new people to talk to when I do live videos and kind of, um, I've had so many people message me and say, oh, thank you so much for doing these videos. I've learned so much. So if you know somebody who might benefit, feel free to share the video for me. I'm going to be doing um, like a gray circle in the middle and it's going to have the baby's name. Then I'm going to do coral polka dots all around the outside, and then I'm going to do like a little floral motif at the top and at the bottom, kind of like a little border around the name. And a lot of people have asked um, how I do the uh, the flowers, and so this would be a good video to watch because you'll kind of get to see an up close look at how I do the flowers. <laughs> the last video I did uh, didn't turn out so great. Um, we had a lot of problems with the Wi-Fi connection that night, I think. So. Anyways, hopefully it goes better tonight. And right now I'm using granite gray. It's my favorite light gray color. It's just kind of like a nice light color that doesn't go on too dark and you can see your letters on top of it and everything. So that's what I'm using. And I'm just using a big, nice, wide, like one inch brush that helps me cover a big area. A lot of people ask what kind of brushes I use. I like to choose, uh, I mean, they're not expensive brushes. Honestly, I buy these on eBay for like $1.25 for six of them because when you take them to paint parties, people aren't gonna wash them out so great. So I can't spend a whole lot of money on brushes. But I do try to make sure they've got like nylon bristles and I like the square head on them. You know, it's squared off because it helps me like get like right up along this edge here. I can kind of take the edge of that square and just go around the circle and it will make like a nice smooth edge. If you have trouble getting a nice smooth line, you might try a square headed brush. And um, <clears throat> Andrea, you say lefties rock. It looks like I'm painting left handed, but it's because I'm using the selfie mode on my camera. I'm actually right handed. I just make it makes it look like I'm left handed. Hi, Becky. How are you? <laughs> so anyways, get plenty, if you're going around an edge, get plenty, like I, every time I go down to lay another line around the edge, I will dip my brush again. Make sure it's not like dripping off, but enough that you've got, you know, plenty up on the edge of your brush. And then just lay it on the corner there, where, not the corner, it's a square, a circle. 
and the edge and just kind of drag it along and I kind of look to see if it's starting to skip like it did there. If it does, I just dip again and go over it again and just kind of, I like to think of it as I'm pulling the paint in the direction I want it to go. And it's making a nice smooth circle. And instead of filling in the middle right now, I'm just gonna go all the way around the edge. And then I'll fill in the middle at the end. That way it looks nice and smooth. Sometimes I get ahead of myself and start filling it in first, but I like to do the edge first. Now I'm gonna fill in the middle. And if you notice, I'm not doing really short strokes. I'm kind of like doing long strokes and spreading the paint out nice and smooth. That way um, it looks even. I keep running out of paint. This bottle doesn't have much left in it, so I'm trying to finish it up. Andrea says, oh man, lefties do rock though, yes. Hi Carol, how are you down there in Texas? Is it hot? I know you guys are needing rain, or you had said before that you needed rain. We've been getting lots of rain here in Kentucky. We actually got a lot of rain down in Florida, but it was just like a little bit every afternoon, so it wasn't enough to ruin the vacation. Okay, so we've just got our nice little gray circle there. I'm probably only going to do one coat on this because this gray, certain colors just cover really well, and this gray does cover really well. For those that were wondering, it's Apple Barrel Granite Gray. And I always buy the matte paints. A lot of people um, like the ones that shine, and I do like the look of the shiny look afterwards, but um, the matte just goes on better for some reason. For some reason for me, when I buy the ones that have the shine, they look a little streaky. So what I like to do is paint it all in matte paints, and then when it's dry, I spray it with like a clear acrylic to make the whole thing shiny, if that makes sense. Okay, hello, Jalissa, am I saying that right? Jalissa, you live in Alabama. Nice to meet you. All right, so if you've got any questions while I'm painting, feel free <laughs> to ask them. Thanks, LaDonna. I've had a lot of people asking me to do painting videos, and I just, I keep putting it off. You know, it's a lot easier just to get out your paints and just start painting. It's a lot more time consuming to go hook up the phone and make sure you've got a good angle and make sure everybody can see. But it is more fun to paint when you can talk to everybody and kind of share what you know with them. This next color I'm using, I've talked about it on here before. I get it from Hobby Lobby. It's um, a needles, <laughs> Anita's all-purpose acrylic craft paint called Coral Cove. And it's just a nice little coral pink. What do you use to cut your wood? Is it wood? Yes, it is wood. And um, I use a jigsaw. And Becky says, do you paint the back? No, I never paint the back. Just because mine always hang against a door, like, you know, you're not going to see the back. I have had people at my parties paint the back, like a solid color, if they're going to be hanging them on a door that has, like, a glass, so that they aren't seeing the back of the wood. But, no, I don't normally paint the back. Hi, Mitzi. Looking great with my tan. Thank you. Yes, I always look so much healthier with a tan. Makes me feel better. I don't have to put on as much makeup. Hi, Madison. From Kentucky. Awesome. Another Kentucky gal. Okay, I want to keep painting. I keep talking and I'm not doing as much painting. I need to get this just a tad closer so I can see your comments. I feel like I'm squinting a lot. Bailey says, how did you start out your paint party business? Did you have to get permits? No, didn't have to get any permits. I mean, it, it mainly started as a hobby. Um, when my husband was deployed, um, I needed friends to hang out with and socialize with. So I started uh, cutting out... Well, I started doing kind of like Pinterest parties, and um, I would just like pick a project off of Pinterest and kind of like teach myself how to do it or read the instructions or whatever, and then I would buy the supplies and invite my friends over, and um, they would kind of pay their part of the supplies, and we would all just paint together, and one or two of the projects that I wanted to do were door hangers. Like, I think the very first one was a snowman, which of course is easy to draw and cut out because... Um, Hang on, I'm reading another question. Oh, that's the same question. Sorry. Um, they're easy to draw because you can just take like three circular plates and stack them on one on top of the other. So I thought that would be something easy to start with. And then I had my dad teach me how to use my jigsaw. So ever since then, I've just kind of, it's kind of spiraled into a business now that my husband's home and we needed extra income. I just now thought I probably don't need to do 
too many polka dots down there because I'm going to end up doing flowers right here. But oh well, I'll just paint over them. Okay, I'm just doing my polka dots, doing random polka dots. And as always, my little rule with polka dots is I, to make them look nice and kind of even or random as I do two. And then I create like a triangle with the third. So it kind of creates a triangle. So one, two, and then three. And I just kind of do, I don't, I mean, I try not to make them too perfect. They're just, you want it to look handmade. If they're too perfect, then they're, it's not going to look too handmade. And the more you do them, the more comfortable you'll get drawing circles. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I can't draw a circle. I couldn't either when I first started doing this. I would always trace something, and that's fine, too. It's just it's more time-consuming. Hi, Tessa. Love all of you. My, yes, you bought several door hangers from me, Tessa, and I appreciate that. Some of your gals up at the hospital will probably start buying them for too long if they keep seeing me bringing them up there. But yeah, I mean, if, if you want to trace something, the bottom of a paint bottle is always good. Like these bigger paint bottles, they make a nice polka dot. I used to do that uh, back when I first started doing this because I wasn't very comfortable painting circles. But I've gotten to where now I'm just go for it. It's less time consuming. Sarah, I need to come to a party. Yes, you do, girl. We need to get together and paint. I keep trying to get Kathy to come to a paint party, too, but I, she says she can't do that like I can. She'd rather just buy one from me. <laughs> this one will have, like, a, a, a second part hanging down from it that will have like the birth weight information and everything on it. I probably won't paint that in this video though because I don't even know if I've got it cut out or not. <laughs> I think I think I do but I'm not really sure. So rather than have to go look for it I will just do the top part because that's the most interesting part. Y'all don't want to watch me paint the bottom. All it is is a few letters and words on it. So if you have requests for, say, door hangers you'd like to watch me paint, feel free to let me know because, I don't know, I always feel like I'm like painting something you might not want to watch. I don't know. Hi, Jessica. I don't know if y'all can hear it in the background, but my husband's watching WWE wrestling. It's not my favorite thing to do, so when he turns that on, I usually get on my phone or over here and paint. Hello Martha. Looking good. The <laughs> skin is glowing. It's this lovely Florida tan. <laughs> I love it because this like with this tan I don't have to wear foundation. And I hate wearing foundation. It just I don't know. I always feel like it looks blotchy when I put it on and without the foundation I can just put on a little bit of blush and bronzer or something to get rid of the oily oily look almost done painting polka dots football season is slowly approaching i would love to see a football session that's a good idea like with a team on it or maybe just uh like colors of a team i guess it could be any team I do have a door hanger waiting on me that needs, that's a football. I've already painted it brown, so I guess I could get it out another night this week and pa finish painting it. I think she wanted the uh, Steelers, Pittsburgh Steelers on it. I'm gonna do a half polka dot right here. It may not matter, because I'm gonna have a vine going up through here, but it just looked like it needed something else. Okay, so we got all of our polka dots. They're all done. In a little while, we'll add like a little highlight to make them look a little bit three-dimensional. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, let me think, I guess I'm going to mix up, I'm trying to remember what the original design looked like. I've had one of these done before and she picked it out and uh, said she wanted it to look like this but with coral polka dots. I think I had a little bit of a coral outline on it, I mean not coral, teal. The teal I used originally was a little light so I'm going to darken this one up. It's Caribbean. But I'm adding like a couple of drops of cobalt blue. Hi, Julie. You hate how crafty I am. Well, girl, come hang out with me. I'll make you crafty too. That's one of my superpowers. I can turn people into crafty people. 
almost like witchcraft, but with painting. <laughs> okay, so I'm taking this Caribbean blue and adding some cobalt just because I want it to be just a smidge darker so that it will show up just a little bit better. And it makes it kind of like a real pretty cloudy blue. Hello, Emily. What size are most of your door hangers? Um, on average, I would, I just got paint on my boob. <laughs> I would say that they're between like 18 to 22 inches. This one's probably more like 22 because top to bottom, you know, that'll give you some perspective there on the size. I haven't measured this one, but I think it was about 22 inches. Um, any more questions? Okay, I was trying to try and wait for this gray to dry, but I'm getting impatient, so. I'm just going to take, I've got like a quarter inch wide brush, I dipped it in the blue, and I'm just doing a quick little border around this gray. And like I said, the gray is a little wet, so it's not covering great, I may have to go around it twice. And this also kind of helps cover up the imperfections if you didn't get a perfectly straight line on your circle, or smooth line I guess I should say, it's not going to be a straight line. And then we're going to do flowers and stuff, so that will cover more imperfections. The more stuff you do on it, the busier it's going to get, and then you won't notice all the little flaws. This one is going to have the name on it, Anna Kate. I think that's just the sweetest little baby girl name. Okay, so I've done like a little blue outline, and right here it didn't cover real good because the gray was still wet, so I'm going to kind of go over it again but it's not covering, so I'm just gonna have to wait for it to dry and then go over it again. I'm not seeing any comments roll through, so I don't know if my phone is like stuck or if, um, oh, Sarah, there's Pop. Speaking of baby girls, how's Charlie? She's in bed right behind this wall sleeping. Uh, she's just worn out. Ever since we got back from Florida, she just, it's like she's still on Eastern time and can't sleep, or she, she needs more sleep. Hang on, I need some white paint. I'll be right back. I thought I had all of my colors over here, but I forgot the white. So while I'm waiting for that line to dry, I'm gonna do the little highlights. Um, for this one, I'm just using like a nice little pointy brush. And sometimes it helps if you get the tip wet because you can kind of control where the bristles are going and I want them nice and like straight. Hello Terry, how are ya? Okay, and I just dipped in a little bit of white. And just do like a little half moon shape or a like a comma kind of. These are called highlights. And they really just make everything pop. It makes it kind of look like there's movement and life and another dimension in the door hanger. Like there's light bouncing off of these polka dots makes them much more interesting. Isn't that cute? Hello Linda. Saw a lot of your family at church tonight. I'm just going to go around and notice I'm not doing them all on the same side of the polka dot. I'm just completely random. It probably looks like I'm flying through this but it's just because I've done it so many times and you just if you try not to just make them perfect, they look better. So, don't do them all on the same side of the polka dot. Just kind of randomly do them all on there, wherever you can find a spot. Okay. Ooh, we're up to 72 viewers. That's awesome. I guess it's been a while since I did a live video. You guys were getting a hankering for it. Okay, let's see. Uh, next, I need to do a big... I was gonna say a coral flower, but I think I just pulled my paintbrush in. <laughs> I guess I don't need to do that. I need to put some glue on that. That's one of my favorite brushes. Uh, next, I'm gonna do probably a teal flower in the middle with yellow flowers. I'm trying to decide. Or maybe a big yellow flower with little teal flowers. Let's do that instead. Okay, so the yellow color I'm using is called King's Gold. And I'm going to do a big yellow flower at the top and a big yellow flower down here. I hope you guys can see okay. It kind of looks like on my screen there's a glare. Emily Campbell, good time to watch too. All of mine are in bed. That is a good point. I wondered if it was too late for you guys for me to be doing a live video because it is like 
10 o'clock here where I'm at, and it's like 11 o'clock on the East Coast. So I wondered if it was going to be too late. But, um, you know, if all your kids in bed and you're like me, you're probably laying in bed yourself, thumb thumbing through your phone. So. Okay. I am not, this is how I do flowers, guys. I don't trace anything. I just do kind of like a strange little loopy shape because flowers are not perfectly symmetrical. And I just, I mean, it's going to take a couple of coats. And I want the one in the middle to be kind of bigger than the other two. So I'm going to stretch this out just a tiny bit. I'm just doing these little loops just a little bit bigger out. And the more you do these flowers, the more comfortable you'll get with doing them. Okay, doing one up there. And I'm going to do one right here. Turn it this away so you guys can kind of see. Let's see, and I kind of want it to be underneath that one. I just do these little petals, kind of, and they don't have to be symmetrical, and there don't have to be a certain number of them. Just more than four, I would say. Like if you just have four petals on it, it might look like a four-leaf clover, but if you've got more than that, it should look fine. If you feel more comfortable tracing something you could always print out like the silhouette or an outline of a flower on your printer and cut it out and trace around that that would be the easiest thing to do hello Faye how are you <laughs> you see Aunt Marie and all I do she's saying that because my great-grandmother uh, was a very good artist which is funny because I always thought she was amazing growing up of course I still think she was amazing she's she's passed away now but Looking back at her work, I think, oh, I could never do anything like that. She always did, like, landscapes or flowers or still life type stuff. Not stuff like this, but um, I guess I do probably get it a little bit from her. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to, to do it at all. This yellow is not covering real well, so what I'm going to do is get a little bit more yellow and just add a couple drops of white in it, and it will cause it to be less opaque, and it will cover better on the second coat. Okay, so now I'm just going to go over the same flower again, with just a tad bit more of this yellow that I've added a touch of white to, so it will show up a little better. I think I like the yellow flower with the turquoise and the coral. So guess what I got in the mail today? A speeding ticket. One of those where it takes your picture when you drive through. said I was going 61 in a 50 mile an hour zone down in Union City, Tennessee. I was on the way to pick up my son from church camp and I got a speeding ticket. I don't know if I have to pay this. Everybody I've talked to says, oh, you don't have to pay that, but I don't want to get in trouble and I really don't want to have to go show up for court or something because that's like an hour and a half drive from here. Has anybody got any advice on this? Like, has anybody gotten out of one of those tickets? Okay, let me read the comments here. I'm getting behind. It says, love your videos. Love watching them. Thank you, Chris Kristen. It's hard to see. Carol, you have a table of my great grand. Oh, really? I didn't know that. That's awesome. Like a dining room table or like maybe like a side table? I didn't know that. That's really cool. My great grandmother was a pretty awesome lady. She was a one room schoolhouse, one room school teacher here in Kirksey, which is like five miles from where I live. And she could do just about anything. One summer I spent some time with her and she taught me how to read or taught me how to tell time that summer, way before I was even supposed to learn it in school. But she made it fun. Hello, Lena. It's hard for me to see the comments from the door hangers in the way. Had multiple of those tickets, but you never paid one. Really? How'd you get out of it? I need to know. <laughs> I'll go back and read the comments later so I can find out your secret of how to get out of these tickets. Everybody says I should just call and dispute it and say, you know, it wasn't me or like it's not a legit ticket. And somebody else told me that like some company is the one who d takes care of those tickets, so I don't know. Union City's bad about that. Well, I wish I'd known before I went through there. I don't even remember going through the 50 mile an hour zone. I just... I don't know. I guess I had my mind on one thing, and that was picking up my kid from church camp. I hadn't seen him all week. Okay, the next color I'm using, totally getting off track here, is Key West by Apple Barrel. And I'm just using a real little brush because I'm doing a small flower, and I'm mucking it all up because I'm getting it in this wet blue, but it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to swirl it around, and you won't be able to tell because when I get done, I'm going to add a bunch of highlights that will make this flower look more realistic. So even if it's got some of that color swirled through it, it's just going to make it look more real. 
and I want to do these a little smaller so I'm kind of tucking them in just slightly behind this yellow one so it's only gonna have petals on one side the other petals are kind of hiding behind the yellow flower those so we'll flip it around and do the ones at the top or the bottom I'm not really sure what's the top and the bottom at this point Highland the Gale thank you love that color yes Key West is awesome I love it it's like my go-to mason jar color because it just reminds me of mason jars I guess I don't know but I'm like nearly out of it because at the last party we like emptied it out so I need to go to Walmart and get some more but I figured I had enough to at least do this part of the door hanger because it's just these little flowers. Okay. Don't forget to share the video so your friends can see this tutorial because I'm sure some of you guys are wondering how in the world to do these flowers because they do look hard, but they're really not, I promise. Like this is probably the most time consuming and difficult part is just getting the shape of the flower and getting a base coat put on it and making sure it's not see-through like that one down there is trying to be. Get with the program. This color does cover really well though. That's another good thing about it is it like it's not very opaque. Thank you Linda for sharing. I appreciate it. Linda's another um, great girl to follow. So if you see her name there in the comments, you might want to go to her page and uh, like it because she does do door hanger tutorials as well. And they're pretty stinking cute. Okay, I kind of need to do a little bit more coverage on this flower that refuses to cover up. So bear with me for a second while I do that. I probably should have just drug my dryer, hair dryer over here so it would speed the process, but I'm impatient. And since this over here is dry, I'm gonna do a quick little pass over this color that wouldn't cover the blue. It's finally dry. Okay, next thing, I guess we need to do highlights on the yellow. First, I'm going to do kind of like, you know how like you go to the hairstylist and they say like in the fall you might get low lights, which is like the dark colors through your hair, and in the summer you might get the highlights. On your flowers, you want highlights and low lights, and um, that's just kind of going to give it dimension. So, I used the King's Gold for the base and added a little bit of white to make it less see-through. So for the low lights, I'm gonna add Golden Sunset. It's just like one or two shades darker than this King's Gold. And you don't need but just a tiny bit of it. Get your little pointy brush. And I like to start in the middle. Let me see if I can get it nice and close. I like to start in the middle and do like a little half circle or like a circle that doesn't meet all the way around, if you see that. And then just start working my way out doing more little comma type shapes you don't have to do a ton of them but you know just enough so that it, the flower has inner petals and outer petals and I can only half see what I'm doing so it doesn't have to be perfect can everybody see that good okay I'm gonna turn around and do the same thing up here start by doing sort of a little unconnected circle in the middle and then do a little half circles all the way around and these are your low lights on your flowers oh, I should like um, coin that term or something I was getting in my light look how my face got dark that was weird sorry okay and then for the highlight part you're gonna just use on the yellow I use white now if I were gonna if I were doing a coral color flower which I had thought about doing so I got like this color pink over here I would do like a pink or some other color or if I was I'll explain that in a minute the teal I just realized I'm getting ahead of myself okay so for the highlight part on the white I mean on the yellow I'm just gonna use white some colors you may not want to use white you may want to just lighten up a shade go a shade lighter than the other color you've used but on this one I'm just gonna use white and it kind of makes it look like the light is bouncing off your flower 
Isn't that lovely? Okay, and rotate around. We're gonna do the one up here. And sometimes I do like a little dot in the middle. It's kind of like the center of the flower. And just do these little highlights. And try not to do them like right on top of the little low lights we just did, but do them beside them or in between or whatever. Just till it looks like it has enough. Okay. Whoops. I don't want to knock you off the table. Okay. Everybody see that? Now we're going to do the turquoise ones. And since I already have this blue here done up, that would be a great color to use for the low lights. So I won't have to mix a color for that or use another color. I can just use that one. So I'm dipping again in this blue that I had and going to do with the same thing. Do a little half circle in the middle and then little marks like that to go around like a flower. Doesn't take but just a second. These would be super cute on some little girl's wall. And I say that like I don't have some little girl, but I do have a little girl, so I need to like paint big flowers on her wall. But I need to find time for that kind of stuff. That would be a lot of fun. That would be a good Facebook Live video. Painting my daughter's wall. I just wonder though if I did it if I would get like attached to it and not want to paint over it one of these days when she gets tired of looking at it. Maybe not though because I don't really get attached to my door hangers. I'm always like ready to sell them after I look at them for a month or two on my door. Okay so we got our low lights on our blue flowers. Now we need your highlights. So for this I'm just going to use the white because the turquoise, the original turquoise I used was pretty light so white is probably the best color to use. Just do some tiny little marks to add a highlight. You can see, see the difference between the two? Like this one has the highlights and the low lights, and this one only has the low lights. So it kind of just makes it pop. And it makes it look a tad more realistic and cute. Much better. Okay, let's do this side. Sarah says, could you use paint just could you paint just one big flower? Um, yeah, I guess you could. Problem is, is it's like a Pringle. Once you pop, you can't stop. And you, want, <laughs> you want more flowers. And you'll see it and you'll be, because the flowers always look better in a cluster. Like this would be boring if I only had just one flower up here. But it's cute because I've got like three flowers. And how much of my door hangers? That was your second question. They kind of depend. Like this one, I think I told her $40 because it's got the top piece and it's going to have the little miniature bottom piece. Usually, most of my door hangers are going to be $35 or less. Um, this week, I actually just posted a few minutes ago, probably like 20 minutes before I did this video, I posted that um, the big daisy flower shape is on sale this week um, from now till Saturday. It's usually $35, but you can buy it for $30, and I can paint it like any way you want it. So, um, if you want, you can check that out. Um, if you know somebody you need to buy a gift for, that would be a great gift. Um, I can put a monogram in the middle or I could just put a saying. There was a saying on one I posted earlier last week that said love and laughter live here. And I thought what a great gift that would make because you could just like, you could totally re-gift that if you got tired of looking at it because it doesn't have your family name on it or a monogram. It's just something super cute to hang on your door. Okay, I just squirted palm leaf and that's going to be the color. Actually, no, I'm going to lighten that up a tad bit because that's a little dark for this. Like, if you're ever not sure about your color, lay your paint bottle there, and that's going to be a little dark for this door hanger. So I'm going to add a little bit of this kiwi color to it to kind of brighten it up a little bit. It's looking a little better, but I think I still need more. And now we're going to do like a cute little bump. Ooh, I almost dropped that on the door hanger. A cute little vine pattern. Okay, um, so just start kind of behind this one right here, and you're going to go with the curve of the circle. And I'm not going to go all the way because there's going to be one coming up from here also. So I'm going to just go ahead and draw those. So that'll be easier to tell where they're coming from. There's something on the door hanger. I think it's flecks of paint off of my paintbrush like dried paint. Okay. I don't know what you call these little things. It's almost, it's kind of like a vine, I guess. Hello, Miranda. Love, oh, you're from Nebraska, dude. That's far away. 
I'm glad you joined me. Hi, Jenny. Thank you. All the little details make it cute. I agree. Sometimes I see some that are like super simple and I'm like, oh, that's so cute. I always overthink things and think it needs more. But sometimes it does need more, but sometimes it doesn't. And like this one, the details make it really cute. Oh, I guess I should explain what I'm doing. I'm just kind of like, like you ever sit in doodle hearts? That's kind of what these look like. Let me turn it right side up. They kind of like look little hearts all the way down the vine. Over a hundred, holy cow, Linda, I didn't even notice. We got over a hundred people watching. You guys must be sharing the video. Thank you. I appreciate that. Apparently there's a lot more people up at 10 o'clock at night watching Facebook Live than I thought there would be. I really just didn't know if I'd have anybody come on and watch. So we're just finishing up the details on this door hanger. It's going to be for a little girl and for somebody, a, mo a sweet mama friend of mine who's expecting Mariah Hamby. There's the cute little vine. Let's flip it around and do one on this side. Thank you for sharing, Jalissa. I really appreciate it. It helps me get more people to talk to while I'm doing live videos and it really I just I think it helps people who aren't super confident with painting um, when they watch my videos it's like oh well, I didn't realize that's how you do that you know and so it simplifies it for them just a little bit I try to explain as well as I can sometimes I feel like I'm just rattling so if you get tired of the rattling feel free to hit the mute button and just watch <laughs> Carissa from Murray. Have you ever been to a paint party? Your name sounds familiar. I don't know. If not, you totally should. Hit me up and we'll have a party together. You bring the people, I bring the paint. Okay, all the rest of these kind of have four, so I'm going to do one more right up here at the end. Okay, and then just like everything else, these need highlights. They don't, they don't really have to have low lights. You could add them if you want to. When's the next open paint party? Um, I think, I don't know, you'll have to check my event page. I think I've got one later in the month at Polly Eyes. I can't remember. It's a pizza joint in Murray in case you're not from Kentucky. You're probably like, what is Polly Eyes? <laughs> it's like an Italian pizza place. Um, so we're gonna add a little I'll, oh, I was, I was explaining something. Sorry, and I totally lost track. Holy cow, we're up to 150 viewers. You guys are blowing me away. Um, oh, what are my open paint parties? Go to my events page and look, or the events on my page, and look, and beside it, it will say private in parentheses because for some reason, Facebook has not gotten with the program, and they won't let me make private events through my Facebook page. They make them all public, which is kind of annoying because then you get people who are like wanting to come to a party and they don't realize it's kind of like a private party, you know, like say for a bachelorette party, you don't want just anybody showing up for that. So um, I tried to start putting private next to the title of the event, that way people kind of know. Okay, so we got our little highlights on all the little leaves and I forgot, I totally just rinsed my brush and I didn't mean to. I meant to do like a little highlight going up the stem too. Just a, a quick one. Okay. All right, so we got our flowers. We got our polka dots. What else do we need? We need, we need the name. Anna Kate. And I think she wanted that in this pretty turquoise color. So that's what we're gonna do. Let me figure out, I probably need to use the same brush. This is like what everybody asks, how do you do lettering? You just practice. That's like, I know you don't want to hear that. That's not the easy way. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that you have to practice because practice makes perfect. But honestly, I was not comfortable with doing lettering when I first started doing this. But I had a party one night that had like 40 people. And the plan was for everybody to use like pre-made stencils to do their lettering. Well, everybody found out that she could do the lettering if you just ask. And it kind of grew like wildfire. And next thing you know, I was having to paint lettering for 40 people. And I was in a huge hurry, so we wouldn't be there till midnight. We nearly were. We were there past 11 one night. And so I just tried to, tried to get faster and faster. And 
as people were like watching me paint the lettering, they'd say, oh, that looks so much better than I would have done. Oh, that looks so good. And so my confidence kind of grew and honestly, it wasn't perfect. But um, you just get better at it after you've you know, done it a hundred times. So, okay, this girl's name is Anna Kate. So we're gonna do like a big, I think I'm gonna do cursive. The original example didn't have cursive, but back then I wasn't very comfortable doing cursive. Let me see if I can position the camera so that you can kind of see this. Although it's gonna be backwards because you're watching it with a selfie camera. But maybe you can see this. I'm just gonna do the basic shape of my letters and then I'll go back and kind of thicken them up. And one of the best things you can do is find somebody on Instagram that you love the way they do lettering and just kind of watch and pay attention to what their letters look like. Like how they do their N's, how they do their A's and just kind of try to copy that like when you're doodling or whatever on a notebook paper just try to emulate the way the letters look and that will make you eventually get better um, you'll just kind of eventually develop your own style I don't really think I have my own style yet I still feel like it looks a little bit like stuff I've seen but I feel like slowly I'm getting more comfortable with it oh and then I guess I should explain this part while I'm thickening up the letters. I'm only thickening up the downstroke. So like this was an upstroke and this was a downstroke. So I'm thickening that part up. This right here would have sort of been a downstroke. So I'm going to thicken that. And then this goes across and down. So I'll thicken that. And then that goes up and then down again. I got to thicken that a tiny bit because I messed up. But once I'm done, you won't be able to tell. And then another downstroke. And all the downstrokes, I'm just kind of doubling the thickness of the letter. And it makes them look a little bit more like calligraphy. Okay, so this was a down. And if you kind of, like I've got one of these pointy brushes. If you kind of flatten it out, like press it down, and then lift as you come up, it will create sort of that natural thickening of the brush stroke. I sound all fancy, like I know what I'm talking about, but I don't know, I guess it makes sense. Okay, now we need the cape part. Uh, let's see, I have to think about how I want to do, how I want the letter to look. I'm still learning how to do this kind of lettering, but I feel like every time I do it, I get just a tad bit better at it. And of course, I'll like doodle my daughter's name occasionally. 250, wow, I didn't even notice. <laughs> this is like the most live views I've ever gotten. Maybe I should stay up late past kids' bedtime and paint more often, huh? Okay, so on the down strokes, you're gonna thicken them up. That's what I'm doing. This would have been sort of a downstroke, but I don't want all of the stroke. That K's got a lot of downstrokes, so I'm not going to do all of them thick. I'll just do those two. And then the A. And like I said, flatten your brush out as you push down, and it will kind of create that thicker line. It's a real struggle for me to not get my hand in the paint as I'm doing it because I'm terrible about that. Let me thicken this up a tad. You can barely see it. And then the last thing I'm going to do after I do the letters is add a highlight to the letters because of everything needs a highlight. And sometimes I'll add like a little bit of a thicker downstroke on these little tails of the T or whatever. If you know somebody who's been practicing their calligraphy or their hand lettering, feel free to share this. Maybe it'll give them some tips. I don't know if I'm explaining it very well, but I'm trying. So let me know some feedback on what you think. All right, so I've got all that and I've got this blue color. What I'm gonna do to do like the highlights, I don't wanna do white because that would be a little too bold, I feel like. I'm gonna dip my paint brush in the white and swirl it into my blue just a little bit so it creates just barely a lighter color blue and then it creates, oh, oh, let me get a little closer. Can you see that? 
it's not white, but it's like just a slight color of light blue. I'm adding a tiny bit of white to the color I already had, and it almost creates like a shadow or a three-dimensional effect. And I'm only going to put it in the downstroke areas where I fat fattened up the letter. And it just gives it that little something extra. Okay. And since I had this same color over here, I'm going to add a touch of it to the edge over here where this color kind of goes behind here. So it kind of looks a little three-dimensional. Okay, I think that's one and done. All I need to do now is do the um, little frame that hangs below. Uh, I'll do that probably later and then post a picture of it with a bow tomorrow so you can see the full thing like hanging on the door and what it looks like. And I really hope Mariah loves it. Feel free to share this video. You know, somebody who wants to learn how to do the flowers or the name um, to do the lettering. So, oh, 275, that's awesome. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys have been begging me to get on here and do Facebook Live and I finally just bit the bullet and was like, all right, I'm gonna be painting tonight anyway, so I might as well get on here. So if you'd like to see more videos, let me know. Um, I may get on here later in the week and do a, a football one like somebody requested. So if you have a request, feel free to let me know and I will try to get on it. So thanks for joining me tonight. Hope you guys have a wonderful Monday evening. Bye.